Hey, hello there. Hello, hello, everyone in Facebook land. It is wonderful to connect with you. So welcome to the short answer. It is a hot one, okay? So we are going to be diving into something along the lines of the truth will set you free, but it just flat is mm, truth is freedom. And so, and the freedom of you is truth. So mm, what's that mean? Uh, don't worry, you're not going to have to tell all your secrets in order to be liberated in this world. However, however, we're moving into some things that are um, much better than holding things in. We're moving into another way of living that that truly empowers you beyond anything that you've ever been taught. Imagine that. All right. So that's what's up these days. So welcome to the short answer. I have a few things I need to announce before we begin um, delving too deeply. And one is the Body Awake School of Yoga within Mortar Institute is starting another teacher certification, and it um, it only comes around when it comes around, which is annually, and this next date begins March 1st, and the kickoff call is February 26th, so there is time to get in and to to dive more deeply into the ancient secrets of consciousness that were truly developed in ancient India. And these secrets of consciousness are about how to awaken into your true, essential, soulful self and to do so through healing and through breathwork and through physical asana and understanding sacred geometries and how bioenergetics works, even though they didn't call it that then, how bioenergetics works in the body, how the energy movement through the body heals you. So if you've not jumped in and gotten involved in some level that has truly stirred you at the soulful level, this is an opportunity to do that. So we absolutely love it. You go through the course together. It's modulated sessions that you learn in, on your own on your own time, but we have regular meetings that allow you to uh, get your questions answered and stay inspired and understand the bigger context of why you're learning what you're learning. It's a fabulous, fabulous thing. We've been doing so much around yoga uh, recently that it's the perfect opportunity to deepen your your skill and to deepen your awareness of what you're really accomplishing in the midst of all of that. So that's coming March 1st, okay? Uh, we also have um, uh, an amazing course that we taught this past weekend. And if you missed it, you can get the replay and it, the replay will be available to you for six months. And I have to say, of all the courses that I've taught, this one has become the most um, opening and deepening and integrative in a in another realm um, that I've taught so far. So that's saying a lot because every year we think something like that is going on as we progress but um, we're really taking a, a larger stride right now. And if you missed last year's course, uh, what I highly recommend is that you get the recording of both of them and watch last year's and this year's course. There are two different topics, two different focuses, but it's all around the Mary Magdalene lineage. And it goes further than that and begins to truly activate some power within you, part of which we're going to speak about a little bit later tonight. Okay. Um, we also have a couple of announcements regarding two journey awakes that are coming up. One, we're going to the south of France, and I'm going to encourage you to jump in if you are interested in going to the Mary Magdalene tour with me, because we're going to close that registration um, before too long. We have to make commitments to the room count and all the reservations everywhere, and we're going to close that in um, at a certain time beyond which we won't be able to register. And so that's really looking like in the next few weeks, we will be doing that. So if you're Wanting to make a decision, give us a call. Let us help you make the decision about that. Usually we have a longer window to to work with registering uh, one of our journey awakes, but I've dropped this one in because there are some things that I want to go back and check out and work with. And uh, we can organize this tour to make that happen. Um, you're welcome to come along with us, but you got to choose soon. Okay. So just keep that in mind. Uh, we also have a journey awake. Oh, that is um, leaving September 2nd, September 2nd through the 15th, um, this exploration of the um, the teachings of Mary Magdalene that were kind of left out of the conversation that were very important. <laughs> okay. All right. We also have a body awake or not a body awake, but a journey awake. There's lots of awake happening. A journey awake to ancient Egypt on October 29th through November 11th. 
It is over my birthday, so the stars are definitely aligning for us to have uh, excellent conversation around what's happening in those sacred temples. So it is um, it is along the Nile, which is a totally different area of Egypt than has been in the news. And what our tour guide is reminding us of is that these these you know conflicts have been happening forever. They're always happening. And they rise and they soften for a while and they rise and they soften. And Egypt is very, very interested in having safe journeys in tourism along the Nile. So um, we feel that we are in good hands there and in a good situation. And if if anything should change, we of course would um, let you know about that. If you've been to Egypt with us and would like to um, return uh, I'm also doing an add-on trip at the end of the program, going out into the Sahara, into um, uh, a beautiful oasis along the Mediterranean that is a healing environment where we're going to do integrative work uh, and healing types of, of uh, processes every day, as well as uh, going through Alexandria, Alexander the Great was, and all of this actioning that is happening in another time frame in ancient Egypt. So that is available to you also. Lastly, we have our annual Heal Yourself, Heal Your Life event coming up, which is something that every single person in our community should go to. It is a very big energy, big event where we are bringing all of the components of healing together and uh, really understanding the relationship between the body and what's happening in our life. And if we are um, learning how to build the circuitry within our system and live fully as our completed anthropos, our completed human being, then we are able to um, truly find um, peace and harmony and leadership and creativity and healing on every level in our lives. And so we come together from all over the world and we come into this beautiful, everybody zooms in uh, on their Zoom and into a studio and I can see you all at the same time and it's phenomenal, the energy that I can cultivate with the meditations and the breath work, the exercises that you'll be learning and practicing together. Transmissions will be happening, activations will be occurring throughout the weekend and I love it. I love to share it. So join us for that. That is, what are the dates? May 17, 18, and 19. May 17, 18, and 19. So uh, you'll be receiving information about that. Um, oh, there was more on the back here. You'll be receiving emails about that information. <clears throat> There's also um, lots of fun things that we do, um, little prizes and all sorts of fun things that we do along those lines. So watch for the emails regarding um, heal yourself, heal your life. Our next healing transmission, February 28th, 8.30 Eastern Time. Beautiful energies that we are tapping into, amplifying, emanating, radiating, exchanging with one another, and then emanating out into the world. So come for your own healing. Come to facilitate the healing of others in all ways possible. Uh, it's an hour-long program that is transmissions and activations for you there. The gold membership for our, you know, a great way to get your questions asked and answered and a, and a dialogue happening around it is the masterclass, which is coming up right after this. And so that information is in uh, the comments below for you to sign up with us for the gold membership. And um, it's a very cost effective way for you to stay plugged in to the principles that are really necessary for humanity to realize if we're ever going to be the masters of our lives. And uh, that is why we came. So it's kind of a good idea to plug into that. Uh, lastly, the Body Awake Yoga Membership class. Uh, first and third Thursday of the month, new classes. You also have access to archives of um, around 100, oh, it looks like uh, between 80 and 100, somewhere in there, um, streaming Body Awake classes um, that have been taught before. There are amazing, amazing experiences inside that. I love translating into yoga what we're learning in the coursework and, and allowing you to build the circuitry while we're in motion on the mat of being able to uh, live by these things. So that is also in the link in the comments below. I'm going to take a drink. You do the same. All right, here's the deal. There have been some missing links in all the things that we've been taught about oh, how to master the mind and how to let love 
land or how to let love be more flourishing in your life or how to find abundance or how to uh, truly become aligned with your true purpose and or to find your soulmate and your relationships, etc., how to heal your physical body, your emotional states, how to be present with yourself when you're freaking out, uh, you know, stress management and anxiety and depression. And what is it that we can do about such things? And all of these approaches to life inside of personal development and, and helping ourselves and healing ourselves, they take into account the fact that we have these, these minds and we have these bodies and we have these lives and we have these situations and these circumstances and, what we have to realize is that we're creating the whole thing, all of it. We are either adept at doing so in a way that is integrated and harmonious that ends up giving us the things that we're looking for, or we're not. And, and if we're not, then we end up taking courses and we end up you know, asking each other or stumbling through life or doing the things that we feel we you know, can best do to better our circumstances. And there is a... There is a there is a pattern, a dualistic energy, two forms of energy that we have to learn how to work with at the same time in order to make any of those changes that we are seeking uh, to allow them to happen and to have them be sustainable. There are certain ways of being that we have to get in alignment. And it isn't about, um, it isn't about coping skills. It is not about getting good at fielding the issues that happen at home. It isn't about getting better at, at dealing with your boss at work or your, your partner in life that, that is, you know, a thug <laughs> or isn't, isn't showing up to life the way that they could or should. And we, we tend to direct our attention in those ways to, always look at how to fix the problems that are existing in our lives. We tend to look for how do I find the blockages that are in my way so that I can get those blockages out of my way and get down the road. And we even employ practices and technologies and techniques and we learn them or we go and receive them and we do all sorts of things to try to get rid of these things that are not good in our lives. And the real problem behind that approach to life is that there actually isn't a problem. They aren't bad. That actually there is something here that is trying to knock on the door and show you you are so much bigger than you think you are. That you are so much more capable than you think you are. And the operative word there is thinking that there is an aspect of you that is beyond thinking. There's an aspect of you that is beyond words. And it isn't just meditating alone that will even get you into what I'm speaking about. We can sit and we can meditate to try to find that part of us that is not this thinking mind that is chewing on things all the time. And you know me, I'm all about meditating. In fact, I never don't. And Every day I'm in that space and either in a formal manner or I'm revisiting that dynamic while I'm, believe me, in full steam ahead. You know, I've, I've, I've taught, I don't know, one, two, three, four, there'll be, I'll teach like four or five classes in, in meetings to boot. What is it? Five classes today. And, and here we are. And, um, and I have so much juice to do it again. Uh, that I'm going to as soon as we're finished here. But what I want you to realize is that, that, that meditation is part of it. We have to disconnect from our thinking mind. And we have to learn how to still ourselves and to drop in, oh my goodness, and allow a greater sense of self to be worthy, to be here, to be valuable, to be valued by my mind. And we also know that we have to get out there and make life happen and do things for, for energies to move in our lives, for transformation to occur. And so which is it? Do I stop and disconnect and sit down and meditate? Or do I get busy going and doing and, and you know, infusing my passion into life and, and making things happen? And the answer is yes. <laughs> yes, both and, except for the illusion that you make things happen really gets in the way when it comes to really understanding and really collaborating with the universal cosmic being that is your true self. 
Your personality thinks you're about this big when you are truly beyond measure. Your personality thinks that you still have to prove yourself and you still have to to write down all of the accomplishments that you've done and let people know about all of the degrees that you have and all of the good things that you've done in life in order to be accepted and to belong and to be seen as a good person. And the part of you that needs to do that is actually making you smaller with every degree you get. The part of you that needs to be important and needs to be seen and heard and known isn't the one. It's not the one. It's not going to get the job done. Nor do you go out and make things happen. That misperception is never going to allow you to experience the abundance that is inherent in your destiny. In fact, when you stop trying, but you learn to focus up without suffering, what happens is the collaboration of these new energies starts to take a different shape. It goes down a different path. You start hearing different signals and different cues and different opportunities catch your eye. And the next thing you know, you're inspired to do something from a different part of you. And you can't access that part of you without learning to still your mind. And you can't just sit down and still your mind and expect your life to change. It will never happen that way. No, well, I won't say never. It will happen. It'll just take too long. And you've bills to pay and you've things to do and you've life to experience and you've a victory to allow. And it's about learning to still your mind so that you can allow a greater good coming through your system to awaken that you are made of this greater truth will literally set you free if you can find it, and you can. And when you do, in fact, we'll be talking about that in the master class. When you do find that, what happens is it starts unleashing itself with an unlimited amount of energy because the thing that consumes your most energy is your mind, your thinking mind. The masculine use of your mind is overthinking. The masculine use of your mind is worry. The masculine use of your mind is getting stuck in the idea that you're just an anxious person and you have to deal with it or that somebody needs to come along and teach you or show you how to not be anxious. Okay, if you're looking for a sign, uh, here's your sign, okay? Here's the deal. It's you. You have the ability to stop wasting your energy by convincing yourself that you're not okay by convincing yourself like you've been doing all your life because you were taught to do that, that you're not enough and that you don't know and it's not going to work. But the you that believed it isn't the you that's going to change things. It's a different version of you altogether. It's a version that you do find when you sit down and you start breathing in your body and you learn how to anchor yourself in the core of this channel and you learn how to carve a pathway that allows for you to notice when you're not actioning in the whole truth. It allows you to notice when there's a greater version of truth that could come through you. When you start to hear yourself saying what you really want to say and it's infused with enough love that it can be heard, you're starting to liberate yourself. You're starting to action your way into a greater self, a greater version of you. The highest self is the greatest self. And that greatest self comes by you accessing a greater love. I'm talking about a grandmother love, like the kind of love. And maybe you didn't have a loving grandmother. I happen to have one. And this one particular grandmother was just so awesome. She was just there with a twinkle in her eye and looking and aware of what you were thinking or feeling and available to check in about it. And she wasn't of a lot of words. She wrote poetry, but she didn't speak a lot. But when she did, you knew that she was plugged in and that you were too, and that there was nothing that could ever change that. And if you didn't have that in your life in any form, You've had it in your life all along, and you were waiting for the last thing you would ever think of to actually come to the surface as a priority because you tried all the others. You've tried asking this and that and doing this and that, but there's a version of you that is based in the greatest wisdom that ever walked this planet. It is based in the greatest teachings that have ever been upon this planet, and those greatest teachings have been taught everywhere on this planet. Before, during, and after what you might be thinking of as 
uh, religious teachings. It is a, the greatest story that's ever been told. It is you coming as the unified divine source that you are, the pure energy being that is eternal, choosing once again to come into this dimension, take a body and emerge out into life without altering yourself, without allowing the truth to ever be concealed. You came to learn how to do that. So when I say that freedom is truth and the truth is freedom, what that means is the truth of you is magnificent. The truth of you is magnificent and your thinking mind is going to discover it when you allow what you really want to be what guides you tomorrow morning when you wake up. What you really want to say, you allow it a voice. What you really want to do is what you start taking action toward. What is really honestly, authentically true for you will heal you. It will heal your mind. It will heal your relationships. It will heal your body. It will heal your life. It will begin to activate and give activation to the soulful self in such a beautiful way. So when you stop thinking and you start breathing in a stressful moment, when you realize that you're getting stressed and tension is coming up in your body and your mind is going through the Rolodex and finding who to blame and what, so, not even the who, but the fact that you're looking for a who, that pattern inside of you that's looking for what's wrong, that gets a jolt of adrenaline when you jump in when someone else is upset and you get upset too. And that co-upsettingness has a bonding kind of quality to it. We get addicted to that. And if it's been too long since we've had a good upset, we create one all because we're used to living in that way. And there's another way. There's something deeper than that. There's something so beautiful waiting for you to fatigue yourself into or to go voluntarily by learning how to build circuitry in your own system and recreate. It isn't enough to just study the brain. It's not enough because the brain is only expressing the authentic essential self when it's functioning properly. And if you're spending all of your time worried about how to rewire my brain and how to retrain it, you're going to learn how to do that. But if you're not in touch with the one who would guide that brain more succinctly, more brilliantly, with greater wisdom, with greater compassion and love, then you'll simply be a more clear mind. And a more clear mind can only hope for something to serve. The more clear mind wants to serve something greater than itself. That's why we love to make cont contributions and make donations to things and feel like we're making a difference. Because when we're identified as the mind, that's what feeds it. When you're identified as the soul, you know that you use your mind to serve the soulful self. And the soulful self is a unity presence, a unifying presence on this planet that cares as much about others as it does itself. In fact, it is others as much as it is itself. And we begin to feel that connection and that union. And we begin to have a freedom show up in our lives, all because we started being more honest with ourselves, more deeply honest with ourselves. When we think we don't have what it takes, it isn't true. When we think we need special dispensations all the time, it isn't true. When we are on a path and we're making decisions and we are in this space, the things that reveal are exactly aligned for what is next for us. And so if we ground ourselves and embody and we choose from our hearts and we lean in, what surfaces is a greater sense of inspiration and that God in the body, that unified principle, that, that cosmos rising is the rising presence of the soulful self. And when we follow that and we put that into action and we go to bat for that and we make decisions that will serve that, we are completely liberating the mind from a job it was never designed to do in the first place. It isn't supposed to be making all the decisions in your life. It's supposed to be feeling and sensing for the truths that are rising. And that is the decision already made. If we learn how, and we can, it's everything that I'm teaching inside of Mortar Institute is teaching you how to do that. So plug in and learn how to do that in whatever avenue feels highest and best for you. And 
A byproduct of that is the mind gets to rest. It gets to be free to just enhance and accentuate and make better the decisions that are already obvious in your life. There are truths and destinies that are pouring through you. And as you still your thinking mind through meditation and breath work that, that you can learn right here, and then you anchor in the body and learn embodiment practices and build the circuitry to enhance that, what happens is something rises. And that something rises is the essential soulful self. It is the master of your life. It is direct connection to source. It is source. It's the same thing, just in body form this time. And when we train our mind to serve that, mm, soulful self has finally become victorious and we're free. So it's a joy sharing those principles with you. And I hope that this short answer stirs something in you. that You'll look a little deeper to see what is more deeply true for me, not what should I say right now that's going to work for me, What's really true for me? And start to take action on some of those things. I know that you will experience a greater love and a greater version of who you are, the greater self. Much love to you all. I'll see you in just a couple of minutes in the masterclass. I'm probably in trouble for going this long. It's a short answer. The not so short answer was today. I'll see you in a minute in the masterclass. Join us. Click on that link and come in. You belong. Much love to you all. Namaste.